So what I want you to understand is, ladies and gentlemen, we talked about our previous module. When we add, or I'm sorry, when we multiply monomials, we add the exponents. When we divide, it makes sense then for us to subtract the exponents, right? So the next thing I want to be thinking about then is, well, what happens? That kind of makes sense. So if I can use an easy answer, um, you know, if you have like x cubed over x to the first, that just equals x cubed minus 1, right? Which equals x squared. And the reason why this works, Josh, is because if I have x cubed, I know that x to the first equals x. x squared equals x times x. So x cubed equals x times x times x, right? The other thing you guys should know that is also x divided by x equals 1. Anything divided by itself is going to equal 1. So if I was to like maybe rewrite this, why does the subtraction work? Well, I'll prove it to you really quickly. But you could say that x cubed is the same thing as x times x times x, and x to the first is just equal to x. Well, since x divided by x equals 1, we could say that those two would cancel out. And what am I left with? x times x, which is x squared, which is the same as that. So I wanted to kind of review that with you, but the main important thing I really want to do this about was what happens when we subtract a number that is larger than the number, what happens when we subtract a number larger from a smaller number? So what I'm saying is what happens if we have x squared divided by x to the fifth? And somebody would help me out. What happens? What happens? What's going to happen? We're going to get a what? Well, well, what's two minus five is going to give us a special type of number? It's going to give us a negative number, right? So this is going to provide us x two minus five, which gives us x to the negative three. Now, ladies and gentlemen, one thing we talked about was negative mon or monomials cannot have a negative exponent. They have to be in the positive exponent. So how do we write a negative number as um, a positive exponent? Well, one thing I want to show you guys is something over here. If I had x times x, which is x squared, all over x to the fifth, x times x times x times x times x. Right? Does everybody follow me? This is x squared over x to the fifth. Okay? If I cancel these out, Let's say I cancel these two out, and I cancel these two out. I'm left with, there has to be a one up top here. You just can't delete it. So there's going to be a one up top over x times one, two, three. So x by itself three times. So what I want to show you guys is x to the negative third is equal to one over x cubed. So if you have a negative exponent, right, and you're doing your mathematics and whatever, and you get a negative exponent, all right, the main important thing for you to make it positive is you can put it as a denominator, okay? You can make it as a denominator. And the other rule I want to tell you, which, so this translates to, if you have x to the negative n equals 1 over x to the n. And the same rule applies if you, if you have a negative exponent as the denominator, to make it positive, you put it in the numerator. Okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, when you have your negative exponents, you cannot have negative exponents in your answer. You're going to have to make sure that you transfer them to the positive version of it. So, if it's negative, put it in your denominator, it will make it positive. If it's negative in the denominator, put it in the numerator. And like I said, I show you that, why that works right here. Here, when I subtract it, I get x to the negative, one, negative third. But that's equal to a positive version of it, of it in the denominator. This is the exact same problem. I just solved it two different ways. Okay?